Welcome back to the Coding Circus. Today we are going to look at another multimedia. Uh, we looked at sound in our last lesson. Today we're going to look at pictures, uh, images, adding images to things within our world. In the VR experience and, and through uh, anything three-dimensionally designed inside of a computer, we call those pictures added to things textures. Because a lot of times when we create an object, uh, it is just gray. So even if we created an avatar or uh, we created a car or something, it would just be a gray box or a gray shape. In order to give it life and pop within our world, we have to have an image that's laid onto that shape that fits that shape kind of like a skin. Sometimes you may have heard that word skin if you, if you are a Minecraft fan. And that skin or that texture will wrap around the shape and then make it look uh, closer to reality. And the better your texture is, the better to uh, reality uh, it looks. So let's dive into some code. You can see I've already imported in my uh, basic wizard imports. Then I added in this new one called vizmat. And that's gonna be useful when we want to take a, a texture or an image and tile it across a wall because we have to tell the computer how many times across the wall we want to tile it. So do we want to tile it once and just have it stretch all the way across the wall? Do we want to have uh, two rows, three columns, five rows, 10 columns? So that's what that's going to do is, is fit our texture. I put in my Viz Connect, but I'm not going to add in a world. Uh, I'm just going to have everything kind of just floating in the space because I'm going to add in some boxes later on that's going to make some walls for us. And the first thing we're going to look at is a basic box. So add in our box. Then I have this command at the end of the box where I split the faces. That's going to give me the ability to address the front, the back, the left, the right, and the top and bottom separately of our box. We're going to get to that in a minute. In order to create a texture, I'm going to create a variable, and then I'm going to use the command viz.add, and I'm going to add in the images. Now there's also an add texture command, but we have to create our images inside of wizard first. We're just adding the images. So I have my two images. Wizard knows where these two images are automatically because there are certain files that the Viz Connect lets us know where they are and image one and image two are two of those files. They just kind of come default with Wizard. We've seen that before. Uh, I think I'm gonna make my box spin because I wanna be able to see all sides of it without having to fly up to it and fly around it. So I'm just gonna make it spin for us. Remember the VizX spin gives us our three dimensions to spin on. So I'm gonna spin on all three dimensions. If I put a zero here on any one of these, it would not spin in that axis. And the 45 is just the speed at which it's gonna spin. Okay, now to add the texture. First, we're just gonna add it to the whole box. So it's the name of our box, dot texture, and then the name of the texture. So I'm gonna add in texture one and run it. And we'll see off in space here, we have our texture, but notice that as it spins, this picture is on all of the sides, which means when we put it on a small thin side, the picture is gonna get squished and not look correct. And it makes our picture look a little weird that we have it on all the sides. In this particular case, I guess it's not terrible because it kind of looks like maybe it just wrapped around the edges, but sometimes it just looks awful when you have a picture squished like that. So I don't want to put the picture on all the sides like that. I want to dictate where it goes a little bit. So I'm going to do and put the picture just on the front. And I do that by addressing the individual node of the box 
and it's called front. There's a front, there's a back, there's a left, there's a right, there's a top, there's a bottom. So when I just do the front and apply the texture to the front, whoops, I'm missing parentheses somewhere. There we go. I can see that now when I look at my picture, it's only on one of the faces of the box. So now it really does kind of look like a picture on a picture frame floating in space. Just to show you that we can add things to the other sides, we're gonna do a texture two. And let's put this one, we're gonna put the same, actually let's put, yeah, texture two on the back. Like that. And we might as well put it on the left and right as well, just to kind of finish it off. There's our left and right. And now we can see that we have our image, which is a flag on left and right and back, and then the picture on the front, and then the top and bottom have nothing because we didn't add them. As soon as you split the faces, uh, the texture gets uh, apply just to the things that you stated unless you don't state anything then it automatically gets applied to everything so if I take this node front out and I don't do it anywhere else then the texture is applied to everything as opposed to being specifically applied to that node as soon as I apply it to one of the nodes all the other nodes stay blank if I apply it just to T1 if I just apply the T1 texture, then all of the other faces take on that texture. So you don't have to switch back and forth between split faces true and split faces false. If you want to change your mind and say, hey, I wanted to, this texture to apply to everything, just don't add it to anything else and just do uh, box screen dot texture, parentheses T1, close parentheses, and don't add any other texture, and we'll add it to everything else automatically for you. This is smart enough to figure that out. All right, so let's talk about a different shape here. Suppose we add in a sphere, and I'm gonna create a texture for that sphere. But when we add spherical textures, we have to be aware that those textures have to wrap around a sphere. You can't just use any texture, because it might look odd. I'm gonna use a classic one, which is the image of the Earth. But let's pull it up and take a look at it. This is the image of the Earth. And, and notice it's the whole Earth unwrapped. If we apply this to a sphere though, it's going to wrap around the sphere and going to look like the planet Earth because we're including the whole thing uh, and the seams will wrap together automatically for us. There will occur some blurring at the top and the bottom but that's okay for us because it's just the poles and that's okay for them to kind of be blurred a little bit. And often when people make textures, they do that on purpose where they'll, they'll make this image here um, extend it out and then when you put it together, it kind of shrinks up and then it looks like a normal image. So creating spherical textures does require a little bit of work, but you can find tons of them online. So I'm gonna apply that texture to the entire sphere. Now notice I can't split faces on a sphere. It doesn't make any sense as really only for a box or a, um, another shape that has separate faces, like a cylinder. So I'm gonna add the sphere texture and let's, just for fun, let's give this sphere a spin because there's nothing cooler than seeing a spinning earth. Make sure I spelled everything right. Hopefully I did. And we could see our spinning earth here in space and our spinning picture here in space. Okay, let's add in another, one last example of textures. And this one's a little strange. Not because of the picture I'm using. It's Bob Dylan. Bob Dylan's cool. Um, it's not a box, it's not a shape. It's something that is called a texture quad and we're gonna add it to just an object variable. So just called it object. Now we could also just call it um, anything we wanted. 
call it screen thing. If we wanted to, it doesn't make a difference, but object is kind of, because it doesn't actually have a, a shape, um, we're going to just call it object. So we could do either. And the command is viz.addTextureQuad. So it's a texture quadrilateral, meaning it doesn't have any thickness. And it's designed just to grab a texture. We're going to set its scale. Notice there is a dimension for that thickness, but we're going to set it to zero. We could set it to anything we want, but it's not going to have any effect. It's always going to be zero. I'm going to set the texture in line by doing texture equals screen pick rather than doing it separately. I could do it separately, but just wanted to show you that we can do it in line as well and set its position like we've done in the past. So now when I run this, I can see my picture over here of Bob Dylan, but you'll notice if I go through this picture and turn around here, the back of the picture is a mirror of the front. So it's literally like looking through the picture and seeing what's behind it if we were looking at a backside, which is a little weird, but that's, that's how it treats it. It's not white. It's not just plain. It's the backside of the image. So you have to know that when you use this um, structure. And if we go underneath of it, we can see that it really does have zero thickness. Um, let's see if I can maneuver that. There we go. You can see it almost disappears. It's because it has no thickness. Okay, so those are the three, you know, three examples, three good examples of adding some texture. Now I'm going to build my room here. I'm going to add some walls. I'm going to add some texture to them and kind of get a room going. Uh, normally in Vizard, they don't encourage you to build things directly in code a lot. Uh, larger environments, they want you to build inside of the inspector or inside of some uh, three-dimensional modeling program and import it into Vizard. Uh, and in fact, they, they have limited functionality for these different boxes. Like if I wanted to cut a door into my box, I can't do that. I would need something like Blender to do that or some other kind of three-dimensional modeling software to do that. But for us, if we're just going to build a basic room with walls, a floor, and a ceiling, I think we can do that. And it's a good example of texture. First, I'm going to set up three different lists. I'm going to need these later. Remember that idea we talked about earlier about mat and telling the computer how to scale our texture across a larger surface? So I'm going to use a list and set a width scale, a length scale, and a floor scale. And I'm just going to make it the room width, the room height, and the thickness. So when it scales, each block will be represented by one unit length inside the wizard world. So if it's five units across, we're going to get five pictures across. If it's six units high, which it is, we're going to get six pictures in height uh, across our wall. So that's an easy way to do it. But you could put in different numbers if you wanted to and see how it scales. And then we might go ahead and do that just to kind of see the effects. And now I'm going to build my walls, but I'm going to use these variables that I created room thickness, room height, room width, in order to create my wall. Because we're going to use this a lot. And we're going to create four walls two, and a floor and a ceiling, plus these scales here. So we need these numbers a lot. So if I wanted to change them, I'd have to change them in a lot of different places. And it could get confusing. So I'm using variables because it makes life a lot easier to keep track of. So I'm going to have my first wall. It's going to be a box. And I'm setting its scale, length, width, and height, to the width of the wall scale. And I'm going to set its position. Now, I did this a little weird. I set its position to be half the height and half the length of the room. So I got my first wall. It's going to be a width wall. But I'm positioning it at half the length of the room and half the height. And the reason why I'm doing that is because our objects are measured from the very center. So I don't want to position it at zero, zero. If I do that, then everything's going to be too low with our avatar and anything else in the world. So I want to go up, but I only have to move the center up half its height to move it, the wall to zero, zero. And the same thing with the, the length of it. Uh, it's, since it's zero, zero, I want to need to move it back so when it meets the other walls, 
they all line up corner to corner, so that's going to be half the room length. So hopefully that math makes sense to you. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the other wall. So I'm just going to put them in here. Wall two and three and four. Um, so my second wall, wall width scale, it's another width scale. And I'm going to do room height divided by two and then the negative room length. So the other direction, the other end of the room divided by two. I'm going to do a wall three and four, which is length wall scale. Room width will be divided by two and negative width divided by two. The height's going to be the same. And then this time, this will be zero. That last position will be zero. Uh, so feel free to use these to kind of set up a box in your world. This will be the same numbers for everybody uh, because we're just using variables. The other thing I did is I used these Euler operations because if I didn't, everything would be lined up um, one in front of the other. So I took the two walls that were on the ends and I just basically turned them. So that way I turned them on that axis. So one's 90, one's negative 90. So one turned this way and one turned the other way. So that way I have the fronts of our box facing the same way. And then my floors and my roof, okay, they're gonna be floor scale. I could have done a roof scale, but the floor scale and the roof scale is the same thing. I don't need to make that separate. Position for the floor is gonna be zero, zero, zero. So it's gonna be centered in the room. And the Euler is going to be 90 here in this axis because I want it, instead of being vertical, I want it to lay flat. So I'm doing 90 in the, the, um, the Z axis. And then the roof will be negative 90 in the Z axis, so it'll go to the other direction. But the ceiling has to go to room height. I can't just position it at 0, 0, 0. The ceiling has to be above everything. So when I do this, I should get a room that I'm standing in. And now we have a room with a floor, four walls, and a ceiling. And I can change the scale of this just by going in and changing the numbers here, which is, which is cool. So I can make this 240 by 24 and make it a wall height of two. So let's see what that's gonna look like. It's gonna look a little squished and you can kind of see we've got this really big long room and everything's kind of squished in it, but you know, it does work. So let's go ahead and put everything back. Okay, so now we have our room. The next thing um, we need to do is apply our textures to our walls. So I'm gonna add in this kind of brick texture for the floor. So let's start with that. And brick is one of the built-in ones. Okay, we're going to get to these last two things here in a second. So the floor texture is going to be set to brick. It's built in. Wizard knows where it is. Then I have to set up so the pattern doesn't just stretch across the whole thing and make one big giant, you know, section of brick. It's going to look bizarre if we do that. I want to make it so the pattern, that brick pattern will repeat across our entire wall. So I have to wrap it in the T direction and the S direction. Um, those are the, the kind of our length and width, so to speak, for our um, textures. And I'm going to repeat it and make sure it repeats over and over again. Okay, so let's go ahead and add this texture um, at our wall texture. We got our brick texture. We're going to add a wall texture as well using the same code. We'll, uh, we're going to call it wall texture and our floor texture as well. So now we have texture that we're going to add to all of them. And I have to apply the scale to my wall using the Vismot transform. And then I had set the length wall scale. And then I have to apply both the texture and the matrix to the wall. So let's first look at it without applying the matrix. And you'll see that we get one image that is stretched across the wall. Now this really is the image. 
it is once stretched across the wall. And I'm going to apply the texture now. And you can see now it's applied in multiple spots and repeated. And I'm going to go in now and switch this to a mirror so we can see what that looks like. And we'll do it in both directions. And you can see it's it's mirrored and it gives it kind of a really cool effect where we have and it's mirrored in both directions so it's flipped for each tiling each way okay now we need to do that same texture matrix for uh, everything all the different walls so put those in We got one for our floor and our width. Now we can apply the floor matrix to the uh, ceiling as well, so we don't need to do that. And then we're going to apply all of our texture mats into all of our different walls. grabbing my code here there we go so I'm applying my texture mat and my texture to all of my walls and to my floor and my ceiling my roof when I do that we can see that the texture is applied if we look at the ceiling we have this kind of stone pattern and then we look at the floor we have the brick pattern now if we go in and modify this scale here kind of play with this a little bit instead of length of wall scale if we want to do something different let's say I want to do uh, one by two and I have to put in that third dimension even though we're not going to use it we can see um, oops I did it there one by two put that in there Uh, you can see that it, it skewed it all the way across um, and it looks really bizarre because it's stretched. We can try f one by three by two, see if that scales a little better. See, it scales a little bit better. Let's try this as five. You can kind of play with it until you get the look that you're interested in. And let's do this is five. There we go. So now we can see we got five of them across. Uh, Ten, I think, makes it look a little bit better. And you could do more in one dimension and less than another. So you can kind of get different effects as you apply it. Um, I think I'm going to do this as a two. Okay, and you can kind of see how it, it changes the shape by the way it repeats across my wall scale. Okay? So that is uh, how to add textures. Next time when we come back, we're going to look at adding a different kind of texture. We're going to look at adding a video texture to our uh, programs. I'll see you next time.